Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the OnSync application to log in, create a new meeting, and talk you through some of the most important features of our web conferencing platform. So typically when you log in, you'll be logging in on onsync.digitalsamo.com and you'll enter your username and password, just as I'm doing here. And then you hit login and you'll be taken straight to your dashboard. The dashboard would typically look something like this um, when you first used your OnSync platform. Basically, it's not going to have any content in it. And to create a new meeting, you simply hit the new meeting button in the top left. It'll slide down a panel. You can give the platform, uh, sorry, the meeting a title. In this case, I'll use OnSync demo. I'll set a start date. Now, this can be any time in the future, but I'm going to set mine today, 1st of April 2015. And I'm going to want my meeting to start at 12.30 sharp. I'm going to give my meeting a duration of 30 minutes. Remember, this is purely indicative, meaning that this is going to help your participants um, and your users to plan their time. They'll be able to see whether this, how long this meeting is going to last. They're going to receive an iCal calendar entry, which they can add to their calendar. But if you overshoot, this is not a problem at all. The meeting room will stay open. It'll schedule this meeting in my time zone. And if your customers or your users also have OnSync accounts, then it's actually going to show the meeting time to, their, to them in their local time zone. Now, finally, I can open, I can add a OnSync, I can add a friendly URL, uh, which I'm going to use this OnSync demo friendly URL. Um, I, this can be anything. I can, uh, you can see that the Friendly URL is shown directly below the field. Um, in this case, we're going to be meeting at onsync.digitalsummer.com slash go slash robert slash onsync demo. Um, and this is a persistent URL, meaning that you can print these on your business cards. You can use the same URL to meet over and over again. Again, this is a feature that's very useful in practice. So now to invite a participant, I check the invite participants checkbox. I enter a name. So in this case, I'm going to be inviting my colleague, Matthias. And as you can see, since I have Matthias in my address book, it'll pre-populate him. I can click him and I can choose whether I want to invite him as a participant, moderator, or as an observer. Now, these different user types have different permissions within the rooms. We're going to get to that in just a second. Um, in a typical scenario where I want to be in control of the room, I would use the participant user type. If I wanted to have a video conference where everybody is supposed to be able to collaborate, I would probably invite them as moderators. But I'm going to add Matthias as a participant now. I'm going to hit save. And as soon as I do that, it's going to ask me whether I want to send invitation emails, which I want to do in this case. So Matthias gets an invitation directly into his inbox. And as I hit save, the meeting is scheduled and shows up in my schedule. So to be able to join this meeting, again, very easy, single click onto the meeting title and the application is going to load directly within my browser here. I don't need anything to be able to participate. Now, this is very important because you don't have to install any kind of application, application to participate in OnSync. It runs directly in your browser. Now, since I'm, I'm the main moderator here, it's going to automatically start my camera and microphone and it's going to ask me uh, whether it wants to allow access. I simply appear in the top left hand side in the video conferencing module. Now we can see Matthias is already in the room. He's obviously received the information and I'm going to ask him to join us to speak. Matthias, if you, since you're a participant, um, you're going to have to request permission to speak. So we can see Matthias is hearing us. He's uh, chatting to us in the chat module in the bottom left hand side. Um, it's very easy for us to chat back to him. We simply use the chat module, I'll say, Hello, um, and now we can see Matthias has requested to speak. Um, again, this is very visual, a visual um, orange bubble that describes to us that Matthias wants to join the meeting. Now for this particular uh, demo, I'm just going to accept only his video. We don't need his audio. Um, and here we can see him appear in the video conference module in the top left-hand side. Now, if you wanted to make the video conference a little bit bigger and be able to see that better, we can simply drag and drop our windows around um, this is very easy to do. And I can also use some predefined layouts um, to which are going to move the application around to be able to create the kind of layout that we might need for the particular use case that we're working on. 
So I'm going to switch over here to the conference here, which is going to bring the video conference into the foreground. Um, we can add as many video conference participants as our bandwidth allows. This is really a unique feature of the OnSync application and it allows it to be used in many flexible scenarios. Um, I'll move back into my presentation view now and talk you through some of the multimedia file sharing features that OnSync has. So I'd like you to direct your attention to the top right hand side of the screen. You'll see control to my most important features and then the first one the ability to control my camera. The second the ability to control my microphone with the ability to push to talk in case I have echo issues because I'm not wearing a headset for example. We always recommend the use of headsets for excellent audio quality. And then the third icon is the ability to show and hide my media library. Now this is one of my favorite features of OnSync because it allows me to bring content directly into the room no matter from which kind of computer I might be connecting from. It doesn't matter whether this is my day-to-day -day PC um, or Mac or whether I'm doing this from an iPhone or from, from, a, from an iPad, um, I will always be able to see this media library as kind of like an integrated Dropbox that's directly within the OnSync application. Now for me to open a document, I simply double click on a file. Um, you can see I've got all my docs here that I usually use for OnSync demos and I'll just open up the OnSync demo PowerPoint, which I usually use, and by double click, it immediately opens up directly within the content viewer for everybody to see. So Matthias and anybody else is in the room is now able to view this document. Uh, I can hit the next page button in the bottom right, and I'll be able to view, flick directly through the content. As you can see, if we fully support PowerPoint animations, which is uh, very important because many of our tutors have been using OnSync, have been using PowerPoint to create really amazing content and we fully support this within the OnSync application. And as you can see on this slide, OnSync doesn't only run natively directly within your browser, but also supports native applications on iOS and Android devices, meaning that we have, we support the full spectrum of, of devices out there, which um, is obviously uh, and as we are moving into the mobile age, very important as you're able to, as you want to reach your your customers anywhere. Good. Um, what I really like about OnSync is that its ability for multimedia. I'm just going to flick forward a couple of slides here to be able to show you that we support all of the Office documents. Uh, we support text and RTF and even PDF files. Let me just open up a PDF document here, and also movie files and even the ability to show YouTube directly within the OnSync interface. So as you can see, this is a PDF file which is open directly within the application. I can zoom in on any part of the content. Um, again, this is something that's shared. The view is shared between all the participants in the meeting. Everybody always sees the same thing. So we use this shared view paradigm all the way through the application. Um, and I'm going to open a video file also directly within the app. Um, I'll just mute the audio here and start playing this back. And now Matthias and myself and anybody else, there might be hundreds of people in this room, will be watching this video together. So whether you're in an educational environment or whether you want, you're want you in a marketing environment, you can make your webinars and your virtual classrooms all that more interactive and more engaging through multimedia. So let's talk a bit more about interactivity. Um, I'm going to shut down these content types over here. Um, we don't need these anymore. So it's again, it's very easy to close this content down. And I'm going to open up a whiteboard. I'll also shut down my media library since I don't need that. So I've opened up this whiteboard here. And as you can see, I now have the ability to interact. Um, I can see some tools in the top of my, of my screen. Um, I'm going to select the marker tool here and just uh, write something up, which Matthias will be able to see. And so I say I was a math teacher, I wanted to explain some important, some complicated technical concepts, then I'd be very easily to do this using this whiteboard. It, we fully support drawing tablets, which again, allow, give you much more flexibility in how you want to work with a, a whiteboard. Now, since I'm the teacher and Matthias is a participant, he does not have the capability of being able to interact with me. He can only view, which makes the experience for him easy and gives me full control. However, let's say that I wanted to bring Matthias in as a co-moderator into the session. I can do this at any point in time. Now I can either give him granular access only to the whiteboard by using this permissions panel. Again, this is a feature that is very unique to OnSync, the ability to give very granular permissions to every single feature within the application. Um, but in this case, I know that Matthias is an advanced OnSync user, so I'm going to give him full moderator rights. Again, I can do this by clicking on the cogwheel right next to his name. I click 
I select the role menu item and then I choose moderator and you'll see that Matthias's icon now switched from yellow to blue and he now has full permissions within the room just as I do. So Matthias, maybe you can just uh, show us that you can interact with us on the whiteboard here. Um, Matthias is going to use the drawing tools. So he's now done this to draw a red box around the uh, hello greeting that I wrote. So again, this is something that will allow people to collaborate wherever they might be sitting. Matthias and I are sitting in different countries right now, um, but we have the capability of being able to interact as if we were sitting in the same room. Now this kind of markup is even going to work on top of documents. Okay, so this is great. So let's say that I wanted to um, move this over here. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Um, and instead I want to change my layout around and put the video conference in the middle. Um, I want to have the chat over here on the right hand side. And I'm going to shut down the participants box and I'm going to show you another one of my favorite features, which is the ability to poll. So I'm going to open up a poll, which is basically an, another interactive module. Uh, which where I can ask questions. And as you can see, it's very easy to create. I add the question in the top, I add the answers um, below each other. And when I'm ready to open the, the poll, I simply hit the open button. And we now end up in this interactive um, interface, which allows us to express our opinion about a certain subject um, and make the poll or the, make the whole webinar a lot more engaging and show people the opinions that might be floating around within this room. It's also a great tool for online teachers to see whether their audience is still engaged. Um, and you can always send the results to yourself via an email to be able to check afterwards who actually participated in the meeting the way that they were supposed to. So, as you can see, I very easily clicked together a custom layout. Now, Matthias can see the exact same thing that I'm seeing. So again, it's very easy to create custom layouts depending on the particular use case that you have. Um, I can switch back to some of my other layouts. I can very easily switch back to the presentation view, which I was using originally, or I can switch to um, some of my own views. So for example, the one that I like to use a lot is this no user list view where I have a focus on the video on the left hand side. We have an ability to collaborate in the bottom left using the chat um, and then everything is still focused around the content, which is typically what an online meeting or an online webinar is about. So those are the most important features of the OnSync application. I'll just close down this content type once more. Again, it's going to ask me now whether I want to save this whiteboard, which is a great feature if you want to, if you have created valuable content, which you want to save for later dates. Um, this is probably not so valuable, so I'll just shut this down. And I will now show you how to share my screen because sometimes while you have the ability to share documents like in no other web conferencing application in the market. Sometimes you might want to teach somebody how a software application works or have another need to actually share your desktop. OnSync will allow you to do this. Again, very easily, you simply click the start share screen sharing button in the top right hand side in the, in the top menu. Or you can also do this from the center screen. You can use the share my screen drop down. And as you click this, you have the ability to choose either your entire desktop share individual computer programs or even selected windows of these different programs. Now I'm not going to do this now because um, it exceeds the scope of this demo, but it's very easy to do. And um, I invite you to do this by creating a demo account on www.digitalsummer.com. We offer free trials and uh, we hope to see you in one of these free trials very soon. Um, one final thing I want to mention is the ability to record. You can record anything that happens in these meetings. I'm just going to start a recording here. I'm going to call it demo recording. And as soon as I hit um, OK, we're going to be recording anything that I do in this room. And when I say anything, I really mean anything, meaning that you can, uh, the screen layouts, the whiteboarding, the polling, the chat, everything gets recorded just as it happened on the day which is again accessible directly via a URL. You don't have to download or install anything to be able to view one of these recordings. This works on mobile devices. It works in the web browser. Um, it's a very, very easy to use and very useful feature.